Hi, it's Suze Pratt, the Holistic Stylist. Today is August 29th, 2016, and we're getting ready to go into an episode of Journalism Academy. So we'll see what's up tonight. some of the content that we get, it really does, it is what makes our life. You know, when we get good content, there's nothing that um, makes us feel more buzzed and more alive. And um, yeah, I, I did want to say, since so by the way, your show on Saturday was exceptionally good. I think it was one of your better. Oh, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. You, know, you definitely, you're getting, every time you do it, you're getting more comfortable. What's interesting to notice was how you, um, Biggie wasn't ready for the video. You just add lips and you carried on going so smoothly, like a total pro. Uh, and I was like, yeah, as soon as you're doing well. <laughs> yeah, that, and, and I knew for some reason that Lauren wasn't going to be there. I, I knew, and it didn't even matter. And it, it was fine, you know. Um, I thought Alicia's show was really good tonight. Oh, thank you. I, I was just telling Mel how much I enjoyed doing it, actually, especially talking about and Lil yeah, cleaning up his, needing to clean up this planet from all this mess so that he can progress because he's been looshing off our prayers right. and our devotion, keeping himself immortal that way. Right. And now he's going to clean it up and untangle the karma. Um, and and his his disclosure is tell everybody that I'm an alien, not the god of gods, just just a creative dude like you know many of you will be, you know like uh, a geneticist, you know like imagine primitive people coming across some dude in a white jacket with a test tube putting ge genetic matter in and creating a life form out of it. They would consider them gods. Yes. Amazing. So just like that, you know, we need to demystify this primitive mind now and and uh, get on with it and just go, well, he was just another dude. That's just part of why we're here as a colony, you know. And uh, I have a question to ask you. Did, did he, he actually confirm that the entire human species was created? Yes, yes, spliced, yes. So all of us have been created by him? Yeah, yeah, it was a splice. Um, well, that that particular well, when he got here, you know, there was already ancient people here, like the the indigenous Australians, for example, were here. African people were here, but there was there was a particular race um, coming from Sumeria that he obviously, you know, genetically engineered, right? Um, what about the, the white people and the Aryan race? I have a feeling because uh, look at listening to Lauren Murray when she says that the blonde-haired and red-haired people are uh, Iranian and uh, per, you know Persian. Um, it makes me think. Oh, and then and then the Irish people they say are Persian. You know, 
Um, so it makes me think, oh, I see what's happening here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, the thing is, the moment is that only one who goes to the history of the Persian Empire as, the, as where it's kind of started from this, um, God King Xerxes and all that. And I'm the only other person who can confirm that research because if you look at the etymology, everything comes back to freaking Persia. All the languages lead back because one thing you keep coming back to is the word P-E-R, okay, which is the dragon root word. And that turns up in Persia, it turns up in the word Peri, which is an Arabian type of angel. It turns up, uh, you'll see when you actually see, see the, word, the, the word dragonology, how the Persian root word, okay, P-E-R, or, P, or P-E-A-R for pear, which is why you sometimes find the shape of a pear turning up in coats of arms. It's a dragon symbol, again, symbol of oh. the dragon. And a person, okay, as well, no. you're right, we're created by, we're, we're sons of the pear. Yeah? Isn't that interesting? So the white people being bred out as, as there's the dark agenda trying to get this you know, let's cleanse the, the planet from all the white people that, the, um, you know, now we're having the invasion of Europe and things like that. But um, the, the, the different the thing is, Anish, it's not a white or a black thing. We can all live together if we weren't being fucked with. Yes. Yeah, if we're being manipulated to hating each other. Because before the governmental manipulations, it's some of the wildest parts of South Africa. The blacks, the native tribal black people and the birds who were the farmers of the land, they lived together. The boys would not have survived towards for the native tribe people who taught them the skills of, of the earth of Africa, you know? uh, how to do certain things, you know, yep. they, they, they worked that land for, for generations. So there, there was, there's always a thing, of, there's a natural wanting and inclination in us to help. It's not a natural state of being to stand armed with a gun at the edges of our territories and defend. For me, I'm, I'm actually inclined, if I see someone on the street who's covered in rain, is all wet, I, I'm, I'm actually inclined to open the door and invite them in, as opposed to that buckle can get more wet, okay? So that is, that is, that is I believe, like, the essential nature of the human heart, and the fear and all of that is artificially programmed into us. That is what we don't naturally have, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, this is what I believe. I, I genuinely believe that inside of us we all have the innate ability for good and that is mm-hmm. given a natural choice where we would naturally gravitate towards where we are manipulated by the world around us. And it is that principle alone that keeps me doing what I do because I tell you, it's so very hard to stay focused on the good of people when lately all I keep seeing is people who are loved and trusted just fucking vomiting all over the place and being so bloody awful. Yeah, yeah, and you've had a lot of that recently, I know. Oh. And then now we have, now we have Ken O'Keefe. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let me just say. All right, I mean, it's a little video, so bless your heart. Um, all right, so we, I did a little expose a little while ago. Let me talk to Gary, yeah, see what you I did a little expose a little while ago called Jess we the, um, um, I do every now and then a global initiatives review where I look at the various projects around the world and I assess their viability as a project manager. And this is one of Hope's favorite things because Hope is a project manager, you know, also likes to know what is worth looking at in terms of what might be worth working with. Very little out there at the moment. And there's a lot of things that are just losing money off people and going nowhere. Yeah, and I, I, I called the Ken O'Keefe thing alone and I said, yeah, I'm raising a hundred, I want to raise 70,000 pounds for this plan to change the world. So I'm going, what fucking plan? Show me the plan. Because trust me, if there's a plan, I've looked at it. I can tell you right now, it can work or it won't. As a project manager, I can do a risk assessment for you. No, he didn't want to do that. No one wants to tell me what the money is going to be. So he says it's secret because it will tell me one. It will get out there. Then it was almost double the amount that was raised for him. It was 120000 that he ended up with. And he says, look, if the plan doesn't work out, I'm going to invest into my property in Dominica and turn it into a, you know, a new world nation kind of, you know, free sex love colony or something. Oh, so, so, so much of a, very much what Sasha's done kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, basically taking all the money from the United Nations and invest into his property in Bali. So basically, Kenneke has got the idea from Sasha and gone and done the same thing. Okay, I think, or, 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 or greed is just inherently in him. <laughs> but, but this is what he's done, and um, all this money is gone, and it's no project for all the money he's raised, and 
but the, the giant of giants, Max Argan, has called this bugger out. Well, go Max. Because I called him out a while back and no one fucking believed me. Well, because I'm saying that we're not, we don't know where the money's going. There's no project proposals. Just everyone throw me a bunch of money and when I've got it, I'll decide what I'm going to do with it. And that's not, that's, let me just tell you, that's not how you raise money for property. When I, when I was to raise money for CCN, I had, I had a 180 page project proposal which I submitted to the people who gave me the initial set of money. It was, it was um, one lump sum from a uh, foundation. A woman had passed away, they filled a bunch of money in her trust to three different foundations, and one of the three foundations decides to sponsor our network. Wow. <clears throat> no, it wasn't wow. These people were fucking cold madmen. They were absolutely fucking psychotic. They were, they were you know what it was? They treated us like. Well, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, imagine you see now Michael Jackson walking down the street, someone super fucking famous, all right? And people, they, they, they look up to them and put them on a pedestal. But the moment you catch him in the toilet snorting COVID fucking hookers or something stupid, you're the first one to be telling everyone what an arse he is, okay? So they're the first to put you up and the first to tear you down, all right? Your fans. Oh, that's people. Yeah, they, they were like, they really, really loved our work, loved the idea of us. Um, but the honest truth is they couldn't handle the reality of us because we didn't work within the system and they had to do everything within the system because they were working with um, an estate, which was they had to pay government taxes. So there was oh. a sort of, it was a good thing to that. But then it was a case of they um, wanted us to come help them out, set up the foundation or the legal work. So we, we went and lived near them and there was a little place that we rented that was being raised by the foundation, which was a, a, just a rat's crawling in the wall. The cat was just so infested with fleas while we were living there. I couldn't get rid of them. It was a really nasty place. It was in a forest, which was lovely, but it was a dilapidated old place. Um, but nonetheless, it was a roof over our head they were paying for. And then when we wanted to move away, because we couldn't carry on living there, my poor cat was like dying. Okay. Mm. We couldn't carry on living there. Um, we found a place that was about an hour away from where they were, and they freaked the fuck out because they didn't want us moving away from them. So they let us move into one of the foundation trustees' homes, okay? And the moment we, she, this woman was psychotic, um, let me just say, the moment I met her, she comes up to me and she goes, I know you, you stabbed me in my heart in a previous life. But what am I meant to say to that? I'm, I don't recall this at all, okay? And it's almost like, immediately it's like, she wants me to feel guilty for something that I've done to her and therefore tr treat her in a certain way. In other words, she was getting jealous of the energy being directed towards us because of our perceived status. And she was. Oh my God! And this is what I, I got off her. And she, she always did this kind of shit. She was really a fucking weird chick. And she would sit there and she would go, So thank you, send me details. It says we must do this. And I'm going, But that's totally the opposite of what I want to do. Well, I know we've got to listen to the set of masters. And I'm like, Well, I'm sorry. I, I don't listen to the set of masters. I follow my intuition. And what you wanted to do is completely. Unlogical, and I'm not listening to some fucking god of yours. I don't care if you're channeling him or not. You know, um, yes. this is the kind of shit I had to put up with from this woman. Eventually, we, we moved into this woman's house because she had uh, living in another house. She had an empty home where we lived there. It was the two weeks of living there, having installed internet at our cost and everything, and had taken a one year contract out for the internet because that was the agreement. She decides she doesn't want us in there. Okay? <gasps> She just comes, she looks in the window with the key works and starts throwing the toys around and decides she wants to start. So we had to relocate the network um, in February. Um, oh, and not only that, after we decide, okay, fine, we're going to move out. So we start looking for a place. A few days later, she sends us a court order. I said, hey, we said we're moving out. You didn't have to give us a fucking court order. You just give us a chance to look for a place. Yeah. So, so the big man had to go to court, okay? And in, and um, yeah, he had to go stand in court and say, look, was was a really a great house to stay in. Yeah. And, and then eventually the judge said, to him, well, it doesn't look like he doesn't want to move out. So you don't have a case yet. We're going to give him a decent amount of time to move out, which they did. And so we did. We moved out. We found a new place. And then the the stuff that they did, we didn't tell them where they moved to. So you fuck ways. Not only did they, that, you know how they actually got me arrested because at that stage my visa had expired. Okay, they oh. just, so they were just horrible the people. These people who gave us money, it was like they were emotionally mature children who were playing nasty pranks. We used to wake up with dead rats and dead birds on our doorstep, you know. Um, and 
and yeah, there were is also of um, we find out demonic stuff. Um, they used to talk about going into the first yeah. and the time of summoning up demons in fire rituals and stuff, but I was like, no, but I said, like, hell no, we're not going anywhere near that shit. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the easiest spot to the way we were giving all that money. And let me just tell you this, one thing I've noticed is most things are pretty much, there's all the price to pay for everything. So, yeah, they gave us enough chunk of money to get the network started, and we were able to run the network for the first six months that I had to charge anyone anything, or even had to ask the public for, for a penny, which is great. But um, it was a case of we paid heavily emotionally um, the trauma. Oh. And our suffering was very, very hectic. So, yeah, I don't know why I was telling you that story, but uh, there was no. Oh, was scammers, Mike, with Ken O'Keefe. Oh, yeah. Why they were wearing monies and, yeah. Yeah, I was saying uh, to those people that we got the money from, I, had, I put, we put together a full, full proposal as to how everything was going to be spent. And you know what? We've honoured every bit of it every step of the way. Okay? We've honoured it completely. So, as far as I'm concerned, we, we, we want to hear, do a published um, our accounts of what funds we've raised and where, how we spent. Like how much we to pay for studio rent, how much we pay for software, how much we pay for for licensing, I'm just paying for security, all that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, at the moment, we have Randy Morgan's crying on his face and patient, we just close all my accounts. Oh, no! Listen, this is the story. Randy's gone around, right. he's fucking popped, he's popped his biscuit or something. Okay, now this, I don't want to tell you, this, you don't like this story, so this, I've been contacted by Z. Mm. Yeah. yeah, how'd that go? Did he contact you at all? Z, not yet. Yeah. We he talked. He's he desperate to talk to you. I've been contacted by Z. I've been contacted by Z. He said he contacted you. You should actually interview him, one of the two of you. I'm interviewing him on Wednesday, but this is an open disclosure. Here's the fucking story. Now, there's always two sides to every story. <coughs> Randy, Randy interviews Freeman Fla, and then we were going to get Freeman Fla on the network. All of a sudden, Randy comes to us and says, Freeman Fla. Has bad news. I've fallen out with him. He's got to stay away. So we didn't contact him to come up the network. Randy gets involved with Z. I think he's going to stop there. I've never talked to Z. I've never talked to Z. Randy comes to us. You can't talk to Z anymore. It's a gone stop there. You can't, you know, just can't talk to him. You can't go on the network again. So we left it at that. And there was a couple of people like that. Anyway, things go south between Randy and uh, I speak to Roger Land. Roger Landry says, um, I said, Roger, look, could you just mediate between us? Because he's gone with on Facebook. We don't want to attack him back. Okay? But this has to stop. All right? Your friends of ours, your friends of us, can't you just ask him? Roger was so fucking scared. So I'm just launching a new project. Roger Landry will destroy it. He's, he, you don't understand what he's like to work with. He has a vile temper. I was, uh, he was made to be our webmaster for the Lift project. And after six months, everyone in our project couldn't work with him anymore. And the funny thing is, Randy came to me and said he could go work with Roger because Roger couldn't get his shit together. But Roger actually confirmed that everyone with the Liberty Beacon project couldn't work with Randy, and that was the reason why Randy wasn't there anymore. But they were all scared of her. Okay, they were petrified of her. So I listened to Roger, and then I got a strange call to, uh, what was it, Sunday? It was yesterday from Z. Yeah, yeah. Z. I was he calls me up, he says, look, I'm watching all this stuff unfold on Randy's page, and I just want to tell you something. What he's done to you, he's done to me, and he's done to many other people before. And, and he explained his working relationship with Randy, and all I could tell was this is one of the sweetest, wisest, most intuitive people I've ever come across. What the fuck happened between him and Randy? So he explains his fun story, and, and uh, again, it's the same thing. Um, Randy... You know, got involved with working with Z, and at some point he just flipped his biscuit and went fucking nuclear. And Z to this day still can't exactly put a pinpoint of what it was that happened. But I know what happened with us, okay, is so that we took a stand against him regarding the Zen Garden thing. That's yeah. how we grew up with Randy. But now Max Eichen has come out of, out of the, you know, and depths to take the same stance as us, and all of a sudden now today Randy shut the fuck up. He's going, oh, it's Mercury retrograde. I'm going to put out peace. I'm like, hang on a second, you coward. You've been ragging on me all week, calling me and all my broadcasters pedophiles because we refused to attack Zen Gardner. Okay, while well, we were getting him the space to tell a story. Okay? Yes. And uh, because I'm the only one strong enough to do it, not just jump on with the herd, I'm getting attacked by him. And he, he's attacking the network and telling all the broadcasters that 
you know, we're lying about how we run our setup and that they shouldn't pay us and all this kind of thing. He's trying to destroy our network online. And he's got a whole bunch of haters, including this and Danny and Mel and the whole bunch of crew, you know, fanning the flames of this bullshit. I wish I could be frozen out there. They I'm working extremely hard for, to keep this network going. It's not like we sit around doing nothing. We work for that money we get, and we don't even get enough to cover our bills. And this is a really sick thing. He's actually trying to kill us because he's trying to take away our life group. He's actually put, he's, he's attempting to commit murder, is what I call it. Okay, yeah. like trying to get everyone to, to drop us and go somewhere else. The simple fact is, simple fact is, he doesn't know how the network is set up because we've built it from scratch. And he was there when we were trialing different templates and we were asking people what was better. He was part of the whole process. And now he claims he doesn't recognize that he never signed a procedure operating format to have his videos on YouTube. He never signed it, he never agreed to it. In the meantime, he paying us. No, hang on, what if you, if you can pay someone, you enter into a commercial contract, which means you agree with the terms and conditions of the of the um, concept of operating format. You've never told us you don't agree to it. We didn't make you sign it because we actually thought he was honorable enough not to have to ask him to sign it. We made a big fucking mistake there. Because he's now telling us that, saying on the, on the internet, I never signed that piece of shit and I never agreed to use my in my work and put on their YouTube channel. I never, oh. I never agreed that they could make advertising revenue of my stuff. I never agreed that they could the purity of my work. All this kind of shit now is coming out. I'm going, hang on, Randy. Up until a month after you left, we were all fucking good. We were good. You and Biggie we were good friends. There was no issue between us. Even a month after you left, it only started when I stood up to him about Zen Gardner. That's when he went fucking nuclear. And just just because we had a different spouse, he now decides to tear into us and, and the, the rest of the network as well, which I think is so disgusting and grossly out there. I am so yeah. I am so confused, and I just stayed offline ever since this has went down because I can't bear it. I can't. I can't. I can't be in the middle of it. It's like a. It's like a nightmare because I really don't even know any of the people. I'm so new. You know. Hey, I'm good. So that's all I've asked for everybody. Is say if you're not in the drama, say the fuck out. Why involve yourself? And there's people who have gone and, take, and put their own emotional claim at people who think they're learning and now they freaking hate me, but they've never met me or spoken to me. Now, and this is, let, me, let me ask something silly. I mean, because I don't know. Am I supposed to sign something? I mean, did you, you guys got a consensual operating format when you started, but the problem with you, yeah, the problem with you, sis, is that um, you, you weren't technically savvy enough to hold you to the terms and conditions. We had to train you a bit before we could expect the things of you that were in that consensual operating format. So we, 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 were, we were kind to you and fair to you and we, we said to you, um, let us get started. And let me explain this to you. I never, I never wanted to sign, I never wanted anyone to sign anything. The only reason I created the consensual operating format um, to start it was so that everyone had guidelines to work on. And then I turned out the people were watching the guidelines, namely Danny and Lisa, and they didn't pay anything on. They really abused Big and I. They were fucking divas to us. Okay, the truth was very poorly. And so I had to, at the end of the year, everybody to sign consensual operating format for 2017, and that's when they left, because they said I was making forced them to sign a contract. The reason I wanted everyone to sign it was because everyone promised to stick by the guidelines, but nobody fucking did. Okay? So I wanted them to commit to it. Like, this, these are guidelines, you need to have uh, the videos to us, a minimum of 24 hours in advance. That's part of the rules. If you don't get them just 24 hours in advance, don't come to us last minute expecting to get it, us to get them in the system, because we won't do it. We will not fucking do it. <clears throat> it's too much pressure on Biggie, but it's too much pressure on the system. He crashes the stream if he does it, if he has to push the system um, to get things in at the last minute. It won't happen. That's the rule. It's in the guidelines. People must understand that. And people still kept on marching on it, and Biggie was freaking out. I mean, it puts too much pressure on him. Oh. And um, it's not like he gets paid extra for the extra work that he does. And he does a huge amount of extra work for everybody. Um, so in order to make things fair, we have to say, listen, there are boundaries, and we need to respect each other's boundaries. Here's where our boundary is. Um, because you're overstepping at any pissing Biggie off. And then the second rule of do not stress is do not piss Biggie off. He's the most accommodating, patient person. I know the moment Biggie gets pissed off is you overstep your mark. He does not get angry easily, okay? Trust me, I've been married for 15 years. He has to be incredibly patient to be married to a woman like me. 
right? So, bottom line, bottom line is if, if you miss a video of you overstepping your mark, then you need to reassess things. So, um, yeah, I, I had to put that uh, concept of operating format together for everybody to explain to them what the fuck was going on. Um, and where the lines were and what was expected. And you know what? Randy had no issue with it. He, he said to us at the time, he says, I've got no issue with this document. Absolutely no issue with it. Sharma and B were like, no issue with it uh, whatsoever. In fact, it's very honorable. You read it, Amish. You thought it was very honorable. I mean, it's, I'm, it's, it says that I'm not tying into a contract. I'm just explaining to you how the network works and what you, how you've got to work so you can fit into the way we work. Okay? Um, and as you know, we're very accommodating. We often um, we do whatever we can to help people like get videos in at the last minute. But there are, there are guidelines for people to stick to, for people to get into a routine of being organized. Because we are. Nothing worse than us being incredibly organized um, and then nobody else, and somebody else isn't. And then we have to fluff around to accommodate for them because they've not got their shit together. And it's okay if it's once or twice, but you've got to imagine when you're running 40 broadcasters and you're doing like 20 shows a week, so it, and to have to have to do this continually three or four times a day, it does become weary. So we just put the line down and say, this is what's required. Please try and help us out. I'll stress big out by making sure you at least act responsibly and get shit to time for people. And it's a few things like that. Like if there's any questions, the conflict resolution process, blah, blah, blah. was unstable and then you know you guys quit moving and I was going like this and then it just shut down. Oh, you, you should see what you look like. You look like you're sleeping here. Yeah. Right. No, I was right here. Uh, <laughs> you say sorry, carry on. Yeah, I missed the whole conversation. I'm, I'm uh, sorry. This time. Can you just wind me back a bit now? What were you talking about? We were talking about you saying um, you're watching the whole thing and follow this, nothing but ego and. Yeah, it's such a shame. You know, like he's he's upset because you didn't take the same stance, which was the, you know, I hate Zen stance. Um, you know, and because you didn't agree with him and didn't hate his newly created enemy. He was upset with you. Like, how dare you not have the same opinion as me about everything? Who's, up, who's upset with who? I missed it. Take me back. That Andy yeah. upset that, 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 that we could go to hate them. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. Got it. This is childish. It's really childish, you know? Yeah, and, and, and as a result, he then tries to destroy us because we, 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 we won't have the same opinion as him. That for me is pure ego. Yeah. Uh, you, don't, you don't agree with me, so I'm going I'm to fucking destroy your livelihood. I mean, how sick is that? So what was interesting was to have Z call me up yesterday and to tell me his whole side of the story. I was mortified. Did you speak to the English? Yes, he read me too. He's, he's wanting to have ongoing dialogue with me. Are you interviewing him now? Wednesday. Then, then, I'll, then I'll call back. I'll just talk to him socially then. Because he, he was going to... Um, I th yeah, he wanted one of us to do it, so that's I'm doing, what I want to do is Z, Z actually wants to come on and do an open disclosure on the Randy Morgan's issue, which is why I don't want to give it to anybody else. This is my baby to fuck out Henry. I just want this story out there because Z was, was brutally abused by Randy, okay? And the whole story of Randy's going to come out. Yeah, Randy was involved in a cult, okay? I don't know if you know this. Randy was. There you go. <laughs> 
It was involved in something called the Chris, um, Christian Ministries Network or something, and they even paid him to laugh for them in court. There's a whole website about this whole issue where they paid him to purge her from the network um, in court. They've got lots of money, this Christian network. But Randy's been involved with a few kind of really, really dodgy groups um, that have ended up completely being a waste of time. And he's been, and what I've worked out, he's very bitter. What he does is projects. Um, Ever he's been involved with something and suddenly um, anything goes wrong, he projects all those years of anger and pain at whatever it is he's working with at that time. And for me, that's just someone who hasn't learned how to manage their pain and their and their anger. I, I know people like that. How I used to be like that. It takes a lot of self work to work through all that and just to humble yourself and, and, and come into acceptance of your wrongdoing as opposed to blaming the world for all your problems, you know. Wow, so all this children of God stuff is actually pain from Randy's cult days himself. How yeah. sad is that? It is. And that's why I wrote that piece, like, I will not project my pain. I've been through suffering, I've been through abuse, but I don't take my suffering and project onto Zen and go, you must be bad. You know, I was, I was sexually abused as a child. I don't, I don't project onto Zen. I gave them a fair space to come and tell a story. You know, and um, Zen, Zen is, I'm so glad for that article written by, um, by Max Eiger because the Max Eiger article covered all the key points that I covered as well. Okay? Um, that the order of the of conformity, no one's made a charge against them. In fact, the silence has always been deafening. No one, no one has made, said any charges against them. They've always come out and said was, I was involved in a Christian group and some members of the Christian group. He didn't even say that. Someone else researched the fact some of the members, a very small amount of the members, unfortunately, chosen that Zen was not one of them. Because there was not one of the people who abused that's the children. Like calling every, physically. Calling every, sorry, Mel. That's like calling every fucking Catholic a pedophile. And I, I was raised Catholic and I never got abused. And I'm not an abuser. So it's like saying, oh, because you were associated with guilt by association, like when I had so it's, this. It's pure guilt by association. And you should have seen um, the, the letters he wrote to Vicky bullying him, like, that Peter Scummy, you know, he's he's gonna we're gonna take him down. I should really get to and then eventually said to him, Listen, Randy, back the fuck off. You're not gonna bully me into taking a stance against him. Which is the reason the only reason we came out was because we were being bullied into taking a stance against him. We were like, hang on. Until we've spoken to him, we're not gonna say a word publicly about this. Okay? So we wanna to speak to Zen first and then we'll decide whether we stand on this issue. And we did. Okay, we didn't, we didn't fall into the pressure of, and many as long as people doing the pressurizing, and I just feel that those people who have holes in their aura are susceptible to demonic possession, the veil between the other world and this world is very fine at the moment, and, and they're, they're bleeding through, and they're attacking those people who, are, who do not practice psychic hygiene, who do not make sure that they're protected, okay? And they're working through those people, because what I'm seeing is a coordinated thing on many different levels coming through, okay? The attack on Zen was un- Precedented. Now watch, no one's going to go after Ken O'Keefe, right? The reason they're going after Zen is because Zen is a light worker. He's not a dark worker. The dark forces targeted in on him and they targeted those people who are susceptible to go after him. And you should read some of the stuff I've got here from Zen actually. Bless his heart. He was talking about, um, I, I just want to read you. It goes, um, it just, I'm going to read you some of what, um, So Max Ivan said there were some questions that weren't particularly that weren't answered properly. Um, I sent him Ash's interview and this is what he said with his thoughts. He says the questions were not direct popular enough. For example, what was your role? Were you aware of any of the instances? Did you report them or go in public? Saying um, saying you attempted to deal with the instances in your area, if you were head of PR, was there not an entire cult in your area? Did you feel the need to go to go public while you're in the group due to your position held? Um, there are a lot of questions um, which apparently according to Max Arthur were an answer, but anyway. And he goes, and so he's doing one more interview with me just to clarify things. So we're gonna get that out of the way. Um, and so he says, interesting questions. Some of them are pure gossip inquisition, which I get a lot, sparked by lies and doubt sown by others. But I understand curiosity, but again, I can only convey what the mindset, I can't convey what the mindset was like when I was trapped in the situation. So how can we explain an action or an inaction in any real context? It'll take a book, which I do tend to write, 
the point of perspective um, and experience needs to be laid out in context of the race spiritual perspective. As you can tell, all those questions are saying, are you really innocent of any wrongdoing? I won't be satisfied unless I know this and this. Even then, if you say it, and um, they express further so they can already convince otherwise comments like, he shifted his eyes or, or watch his hands, he laughed or smiled when he shouldn't have, yada yada. I don't need that. I'm talking to a blood monkey sucked into the mind virus, dutifully spread by jealous, ill-meaning animals and agents of fear and suspicion to elevate themselves. I love Max, he's a man of heart, but this has hit him hard, as it has everybody I know, close friends included. It's designed to do that, down to heartfelt knowledge and go with the negative attack mode. I understand there are questions, zillions of them, but I can't ask them all, never mind immediately, or on their terms. I wasn't in charge of PR, and now some are even saying that I sold, um, never sold cookware and made millions doing it, which I did, but that, it, that was a payoff, that was a payoff from the children of God. So the money didn't come from his work, came from the children of God, that's not true. And that the group sold back to the elite, which is absolute insanity. I never heard of any of this. And this is being published by a spiritual expert, Bernard uh, Gunther. Go to his website and read his intro on this coaching page. Exactly, exactly the opposite of what he's doing. I mean, come on, a spiritual healer that was a monkey and freaks out sharing confidential information about me, then asks for a thousand dollars for lost time in her practice due to trauma, of course. Are you shitting me? Then Bernie goes able on a campaign against someone he didn't talk um he didn't talk to about it at all, and then he's Sutton is commandeering a full circle project to join the witch hunt for me and is even contacting the authorities. How fucking backwards can I possibly get? And this is supposedly close friends who knew me well. In Edna's case it was almost five years. So that's oh. it. okay. it's yeah. So all these super spiritual guru types of are, are, are so he tackles in. And he says well, the people who respect to be the most spiritually involved and the most forgiving and understanding have been the least that you know the world want to push the spiritual high. But it has been as that it's a real process of sorting the wheat from the chaff. To see yes. it's still hooked you can you can still be accessed by the archons, okay? And who has genuinely been able to make themselves pure in their spirit, stand in their true conviction and uh, in their full presence with their full faculties, and the command of their full spiritual energetic being, not with some other demonic influences coming in. What I have shown, which is scary for me, is how many of these spiritual types are susceptible to demonic influence. That includes Randy, that includes Lisa and Annie, and the whole fuckers cult, that includes a whole bunch of people. I had an interesting conversation with Z, who, let me tell you what is very clear up in metaphysics. That guy is really going to be the guy to interview when you do interview a and about the metaphysical stuff. When he comes out to speak to me on Wednesday, what he wants to do is he wants to tell, he wants to talk about who he is, where he came from, and his involvement with Randy and what happened there, because it's quite a story, and it's also quite a vicious story. What we want to do is just create um, a bit of a, I'm not out to bash Randy, all I want to do is give Z a chance to talk, because Z desperately wants to get it all on record. Oh, yes. After Randy dumped him and just publicly trashed him, no one wants to talk to him anymore. And I said, I'm sorry, I had to apologize to him. I'm oh, sorry, we didn't want to talk to him. We were told not to. We trusted Randy. Okay, I was, I trusted Randy. And, and, and I bet he even went to use those and said, look, there's a problem with Z. You know, just, just hang back because of Randy. You know? Um, and I'm sorry, I have to apologize to you about that because I'm sorry, we, we should not be doing that. But that, that is where we fail. We should not have said that to you. We should have allowed you to just go and talk to him and do your thing. It's, it's not up to us to say, to, 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 to follow anybody else's orders or commands about who we can or can't talk to. But hang yeah. on. <clears throat> okay. So I was unfortunately there when it all went down. And what happened is there was a group that had been brought together to um, talk you know, like a, like a panel group. And um, that was back in February. And uh, it, the energy was crazy of all the people put together. And um, it was kind of like uh, 
a weird power trip between not only those two as men, but with the female energy too. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was wild. And um, when I joined, uh, like I said to Z, I, I schedule everything on my appointment book. Mm -hmm. You know, and so originally it was right after my show, and that's when the show was from two to four, not four to six. And then uh, the time of it got changed, I want to say to like a Tuesday or something, and I told him from the time I got involved that there are certain times I'm always going to be booked and during the week it's going to be busy from like 3.30 to 7. I mean, like clockwork, you know, kind of like the morning slot gets taken. There are certain times that I can't bend my flexible schedule on. and. Uh, I'm a pain in the ass with that. Anyhow, I, I'll admit that from the go. You know, it's just part of my freedom. But when the day changed is when I had to get out of it. Yeah. I understand what you mean by that. I had a similar experience working with the Swiss in the delegations, bringing a group of people together online. The problem is, is that there's been no time put into actually interviewing, it's just a bunch of people, okay, come together on a common ground, let's see what we can do. And you have a bunch of egos like that in a room, it's very, very difficult to manage and control. I, I've been there, I've had this on a million times, trust me, I've gone to a number of online projects. I know exactly what you're talking about there. Everybody's got a, you know, a little bit of a expertise, a little bit of an ego in some area. And then the difficult part as a leader is to balance and manage the egos. Right. And that's one thing I, I learned to do when I was working um, in styling, in fashion styling, and there was all, all these celebrities, and here I am, this style is happy, just, whoa, suck it all in. Be a shock absorber with all this crap that gets, like, directed at you. But anyway, I've I, I managed that, and that's how I was able to run this was in the African delegation for as long as I did. I was the coordinator and for the delegation there. And then I stepped away, because again, it was the same thing you're talking about, so it just, managing what you guys made, I was a constantly a shock absorber, which meant that I was constantly getting drained and hammered for having to balance out all the aberrant energies. The problem, um, I, I, I know there's two sides to every story, and what, I've, what I am uh, doing now is just giving the a chance to come forward, because he, he is like, he had the impression that we had a bad impression of him because of Randy, which is true. And I, 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 I really hate myself for doing this, but I, I'm going to admit because I made a mistake. You know, when I make a mistake, I'm, I'm very honest about it. I made a mistake. I should never, I dismissed him. I dismissed him because of Randy. It's actually a big bit of can to me think we've got to stay away from Zoom, we've got to stay away from Freeman and Flat because Randy doesn't like it. We can't, we can't bring Randy in the network. And of course we did that because we wanted to hold on to Randy, you see. Um, but what I've realized is all these people that Randy falls out with, it's not the people's problem, it's Randy. Because that's what Roger said. Roger said, you know, he, Randy falls out with everybody and he blames everybody else. But at the end of the day, you've got to look at the pattern and go, hang on, the common denominator here, Randy, is you. It's Randy. Okay? <laughs> you, can't, you can't keep blaming everybody else for your issues. You've got to face the reality of the fact that you're causing conflict because you of your ego or your insecurities or whatever. It's the same pattern. Like we see in everybody. There's nothing new under the sun. This is the same bullshit we see. We all have to work through our bullshit. Some of us have actually put the effort into working through. Some people just 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 wallow in, in, in the misery and patheticness and the ego for the rest of their lives and they create a miserable life for themselves and they alienate everybody around them. And that is what Randy is doing. Okay? And I feel sorry for him. What is that? It is. I, I do. I, I'm a compassionate person. Despite every angry thing he's done to us, I, I actually feel sorry for him because what I see is I don't see any coming at us. What I see is a very hurt man who's got, who's flaming and directing that pain at others. Okay? It's self suicide too. Mm, yeah, yeah. 
I just, I just see it very hurt there. That's what I see. Um, and we never, we never, we never wanted to hurt him. It wasn't our intention to hurt him. And I, me standing up for someone who I thought was wrongfully attacked is hurting him. He really, really needs to do some self work because that's pure ego. Okay. He had, he had no right to attack Stacey. He was wrong on every account. Um, we know that to go with like that and then attack us for standing up and, and the way he did and then it's inciting the unfucker group um, in the way we could as well. It's just, let me just tell you something, I've lost Sharma, who was left over this. What? Okay. I've lost Roger, I've lost Hillary, and I've lost Randy. So it's four people. Fuck! Fuck! I didn't know you lost Sharma as well. And I, I, I heard Sh you. Sharma and Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. And it's fuck people. Fuck. And Sharma says, there seems to be a collective opinion as a network. And I said, no, uh, just no one on the network stupid enough to go on a hate campaign against them. Okay? I'm not stopping anyone from doing anything. What I'm doing is being a beacon in the light and standing up and saying, this is what I'm doing. Okay? Um, if anybody wants to know where we stand, because a lot of people do look to us for guidance. They go, it comes and say, holy fuck, this is going on. What do you do? I don't know what some people want to do, I'm telling you what I'm doing. Okay? Me, I believe, is, is the honourable and, and integrity full thing to do. And if you want to do the honourable and integrity full thing to do, you're welcome to do as I do. I'm not saying to you, you have to. So I, I, I say to myself, what about putting a message in the sky? Because every board, I've got five broadcasts and one day comes to me with the same shit. And then I'm like, okay, hang on a second here. There's an, as yet, it's just a bunch of empty speculations. Zen hasn't made any commentary, and there's no witness. So let's deal with what we have, which is fuck all, except a bunch of hype. So I'm not going to attack the guy. I'm going to approach him and say, let's talk. And that's the message that I put out. Okay, calm down, everybody. Let's not attack him. Let's first wait for him to speak, and then we can analyze what he has to say. Okay, because until we've got any other witnesses coming forward making claims against him, the only statement and testimony we have is his account of the facts. And that's all we can work with. That's the only thing we've got to work with. So until we got that, it's not to anything else. So even I could put that out, Randy was still uh, raving on them and giving Zen a hard time. Even I could put that piece out. Um, apparently he had an issue with the fact that um, Biggie had put an article out saying that this could be bullied before it was able to get up to the net. Randy said it made it look like we'd already taken sides. If we had it, we'd just say, fuck off, we'd like to be bullied. We'd like to be bullied. So sensitive. It, it's not sensitive. I just think it's nasty. It's nasty. It just in any way we don't have nastiness as he has. You know? Uh, I'm so shocked. I, it's like we have. It's like we have 18 months of, of friendship and really had it and it's just gone. And this is the thing that's most heartbreaking. Is that we actually, in the world we it doesn't look like we're actually very simple souls. We love the people that we love. Okay? We, when we get close to people, and people hurt us. It, it actually breaks us, okay? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we're, we're, we're not the tough, or, 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 or people think you're just like an aggressive tough. We're actually deep down inside with a very big heart. And all we want is to love everybody. And we did, we love them tremendously. And he, he really hurt us. He really fucking hurt us. And um, I, I was just so, I'm so sad at the way he went because he didn't even try. Our friendship had nothing to do. He didn't even try to work it out. He just went to live here. No, 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 no. Try to reach out to him. Even asked Roger Landry to, to, to mediate. They said, please, can you mediate? Because you know, someone comes to ask me to mediate, I do it. When someone asks you to mediate, you can't say no. Roger said no. Because he was afraid. He was afraid of Randy. He's I afraid. Just, I just saw a show with you and um, Roger just the other day. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was a cool record from another show that we've done. Oh, um, okay. but was and it was his last show, and he asked us to play that as his last show. And we were asking Roger on good terms. I have no issue with Roger Landry as a person at all, okay? Um, yeah, it's a bullshit. None of his, none of his projects ever work, and he claims he's got this and that going, he's got bubble going. But, you know, he's a typical, he's a typical dog to salesman, okay? But uh, as in terms of uh, how, he had, how he had us big behind, he's, he's always been extremely civil and street polite and he saw to me he ain't gonna get into the whole online mudslinging thing. So I respect him for that. But then I asked him, could you please just go to Randy and maybe try and mediate because this is ridiculous. 
Yes, so I've got some, I'm watching you project Rain, I, I say anything to Rain Young, he's gonna, he's gonna turn against me and will destroy my project. And, oh, and shit. The guy was absolutely petrified. Okay, and in the end, he said to me, please don't think that I'm spineless and I've, and I'm, and I've got no balls. And then this person, and then of course, the person really thinks says, yeah, you, you're spineless and you've got no balls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we tried, we tried, yeah, we tried everything. We tried reaching out, we tried mediation, we tried everything, and nothing worked. He was, he was intent to have an angry brain fart, and it was, and it was going to be at us. And yeah, drag the whole world with him. Yeah. And that that sounds it doesn't sound fucking normal, you know? No. No. Well this is what Z said. Z said having met him in person and having worked with this guy in person, okay? Says that is it, it, he, he remembers being with Rand, he ran away for a Reiki treatment and the way, and the lady with the Reiki treatment said, You have a lot of attachments. Okay, you've got to get this all stuff by a professional. Okay, so he's got attachments. Right? That's what's working through him. That's that's why he's got nuclear anger. Yeah, exactly. They're, those attachments are working through him. They feed off that, don't they? That's their food. So they, that's, that's what they want. That's why, that's why he was like, um, you know, if you're not with me, you're against me, you know? Anyway, the bottom line is Z is now coming in Wednesday to give his entire side of the story to talk about frankly what happened with Randy because this, this is what we can know is he was desperate after the whole with Randy to connect with someone on the network because he was he, he was adamant that Randy had gone around slagging him off and um, just said because that's what Randy did to all of his friends and all, the friend, all of Z's friends pulled away from Randy was part of nuclear Randy with Z. So I'm going to be speaking to Z and getting his side of the story. And Z's going to be putting the entire disclosure across um, what happened with Randy. And people can see for themselves what kind of person Randy is based upon people that have really worked with them. Right? Um, you know, he's a good writer too. Z. He wrote, yeah. He wrote that, that um, X-ray John, John Funnyman piece. Yeah. Yeah, he told me he's John Funnyman, which I thought was really good. I said, yeah. I said, you're a fucking genius. He said, I am a fucking genius. <laughs> well, I, I think he's a very interesting character. I wanted to see what yeah. kind of do. Uh, you know, like I said, we're going to speak to him, um, hear his story, and then just, just balance out the playing field a bit, you know, get, 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 yeah. understand what was working for me, because the way he talked about it was exactly what I expected, the metaphysical side. So Randy does not fact just like a car gene, and he has a lot of attachments, Projects his pain, a pure narcissist. Um, has has no friends, uh, has no partner. He oh. his job is something like filing microfilm or something like that. Very boring job. Um, and perhaps, you know, just a very miserable person in general. And I'm surprised that Z said, I'm surprised you worked with him for as long as you did without having a fallout. And I said, There's one very reason for that. Is that because myself and my husband Biggie are two of the most amiable people you'll ever meet? We can adapt to almost any situation, and we have to because we deal with a very vast, varied personalities. Okay, yeah. and to some some really hectic personalities are people like Jan Urban, Johan Olpa, and guess yeah. what? Two of the most extreme personalities, and and we actually get along with them some of the best. Do you know why? Because there's no like bullshit with them. Okay, they're straight, they're direct. Johan sometimes says they're not. Kiara, could you not be a little more less brutal? Uh, you know, but I just, I just, I, I somehow, I respect that so much. I want people, you know, hurt me with the truth and try to save me with a lie. Um, I'm going to pop into the top and talk to the people who maybe say a little bit better. Oh. No, but I like that show tonight, Alicia. Oh. Wait, say this, this about the Anunnaki, uh, uh, Yahweh was in the Anunnaki. That's amazing. And that guy actually has has been, um, has been actually met him. And I said, because I was confused over what he looked like, because I wasn't sure whether Enlil was a dragon-looking guy or a bird-looking man or a man-man with a beard. Yeah, those big um, eyes. <laughs> and, he, and he said, no, he's a guy. The, the, the way he shape-shifted, the holographic right. form that he took, to meet John was um, 
was like an eight foot tall Asian dude right. with big eyes. Right, 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 right. Wow. Right. Wow. Who would have so, uh, Which is great because that gives me kind of a way of um, tuning in. And, you know, like it was like trying to wake the dead waking me up this morning. I felt like I'd been fucking working all night. And then when I mentioned that to John, I said, I could barely get out of bed to do the show this morning. So if that's because you would have been up doing right, doing work and for, to prepare right. for the show, because this is an off-planet platform as much as it is the wrong-planet platform. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Well, 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 well. Yeah. So apparently, Yahweh, a.k.a. Emil, is cleaning up the planet now because he realizes that if he enslaves the planet, he enslaves himself to the planet in his falsely created heaven and hell and afterlife and recycling soul pits and everything. And um, and he's got it he wants to disentangle himself from all this and then go on further and, and the heavenly hierarchy is pulling him back going, Hang on a minute, look at this mess you've made here. You better fucking clean this out before you were sent, buddy. Right. And So, so things are gonna lighten up. I'm so excited about that. That Elul himself, Yahweh, who's created this havoc here for the last, you know, several thousand years, right. is actually cleaning this shit up now. And this, uh, and this show this morning, oh. John told me, was part of Elul's own disclosure. What is basically Elul passing on the message about his soul progress and what the planet's in for. And that was so exciting to me. But I was watched this morning trying to get me out of bed. I hit the snooze button three times. And because, you know, it's breakfast, it's fucking breakfast TV for me, right? right? The right. live show, it starts at 8. And I set my alarm for 6 and it was like, oh, oh just give me till 6, Eddie. Oh, just give me till 7. Fuck, I need to have a shower. Mm. You know, so um, it was really hard, and I thought it's it's like I've been up all night, and 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 I probably was. You know, it was right. probably a bit of a graduation mm -hmm. for me too. Yeah. Well, and, um, that was the thing. You know, you two were communicating astrally, and that's like yeah. there's certain nights when I get downloads, they're just talking in my ear. Yeah. All night, and I mean I'm asleep, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm there, but I'm not. Yeah, but it's that, that being present, but not mm -hmm. yet. I totally understand where you're well, coming from there. Well. So yeah. thanks for watching. Thanks. It really means a lot when a peer watches. I was just saying, say, Mel, it really means a lot when a peer watches one of my shows, you know? Like a fellow broadcaster, like Hope, sometimes tunes in and... Susan was just saying she tunes in and, and I also try and make an effort and every time we do a wax lyrical, for example, I always look for it in the in the archive and, and watch it because you've all got something interesting to say. Um, you know, and, and I try and watch anything that I can um, to keep in touch with, you know, the family too, you yeah. know. I try as well. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't get to see everything just simply because we don't have the time. Um, but it, it's a simple case of the latest shows, I don't make it. Um, Monday, I do the email holding back every second week, but also your show comes up for me after it's age, I always miss it if I can get to the academy because I need to get to sleep and then I watch it um, the next day when we do the uploads. So there was this one that, um, that um, I have been watching since I started doing journalism academy um, the next day. So I normally watch your show live. Um, the Saturday evening is our Saturday evening and ice cream treat. Ben and Jerry's and Swiss. Ben and Jerry's and Swiss. Which actually, I actually called that. Ben and Jerry's and Swiss. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the Hope's um, show as well, we, we watched. Um, I mean, also there are some shows like Paula's show on a, on a Thursday, which is first thing, which because it's so early, I still busy doing all the things I need to do for Thursday, my edits and uploads and stuff like that. So I, I sometimes miss her show. 
the early ones are the very late ones. It, it's the ones that are in the sort of more prime time space. It's only when I watch TV that I actually just get to go, whew, relax, my relax time. But then we have the full day. So they get our up first in the morning, we're running our computers, and we're there until 6, 7 o'clock at night. And so then we take our first little break, you know, um, um, three times, four times a week, we go to yoga first thing in the morning, then we come back and we start our day. So we have a very, very regular routine, um, which I hate, actually. Um, I don't know how I got back into routine. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I running a network, you've got to have some routine, as you said, because of the consensual operating form, for example. Yeah. Now, did you get any new broadcasters? I did put the word around and I did get people to read the uh, Conscious Booking Network uh, consensual operating format. I did pass that under a few notes. Did you get anybody signed yes. up? You know, Tina's Rachel has expressed interest that um, it's kind of like, I think she shows her interest to be the I don't know if she can afford it, the honest truth. Um, she doesn't have the money. She yeah. told me she doesn't have the money. She no. told me I'll be just paying child support and I think that might have been, you know, part of the equation and he just he just couldn't do it. New Zealand's really struggling at the moment. I know, I know. I know. I, I got that idea from Rachel. She didn't want to say anything to me but um she didn't she, she said she was very keen but she couldn't afford it. Uh, well she didn't say that, I just got that impression. But it's fine. Right. Let's just let's just let's just keep the word going out. Obviously new broadcasts are always great. We've got some more French broadcasters coming on which is good. Let's just say things are good uh, right now. Wait. Yeah, he, he came back and yeah. saw your hand. Yeah, we, we, we've always been on good terms with Johan. You know, as I said, he yeah. left on good terms, and when he left, I wrote to you know, this is the way you, when Johan left, is the how I expect people to be. Okay, it's with dignity. Okay, I've been some screaming fist, now stabbing in the back, bullshit. Johan leaves with dignity. And then when the people here in Holland make the allegations, because trust me, he lives in Holland here with me. We've got a whole different set of politics going on here in the alternative media. There's the people who recently, after he left, who made allegations about me. In fact, um, it was, you know, I told you earlier that, that, that cult that gave us a lot of money. They were making allegations about me, um, about Big and all sorts, and then went to your to try to get a smear campaign against us. Your aunt came straight to us, asked us what the facts were, presented us to them, and they never came back to him. So guess what he does? He sticks them on his list of disinformationists. He's got a list, okay, that he's published. He just doesn't take bullshit. But he's a very straight down the line kind of guy. He's the kind of guy who go, he's a researcher, he goes to the source. So if someone comes up with allegations, he'll go to the source to check it out. That's what he did with us. He didn't publish bullshit online. He came to us and he checked it out. And that's the nice thing about him. And um, you know, he's the kind of guy who said, no, I need a one slot here and there. Can I do it? And I'll put him in because it's just, in, in terms of how people operate honorably and in terms of integrity and in terms of these so few good people out there, Johan is one of the very few good ones. Yeah. He, does, he does have personality flaws, he does have a bit of an ego, and he does like, I don't know, like if I want to interview someone, I'm mailed them, if they don't get back to me, I might mail them two or three times until they respond to me. And it's kind of guy, I've mailed them, they haven't gotten back to me, so they're obviously not worthy of me interviewing. You know, kind of thing. Whereas I'm a bit more okay. I'm, I'm humble and I'll try a few times because, you know, the more <laughs> he's not, he's not quite that humble. But, um, yeah, that, that for me is the way I expect it to be is, is for people just to come and have a chat, maybe stick a little note in the scarf for it. And he's like, honest, he had to put so much work into doing Pacto TV and he didn't sell. Uh, <coughs> Last year. <coughs> And uh, <coughs> he, he said that <clears throat> he put so much work into Pate TV and um, he didn't sell that much more work for having done it. But I told him at the beginning, it's not a guarantee of you being famous for working with us. All we're doing is providing you with a service, okay? Um, how you promote yourself online is up to you. And the thing is, Johan doesn't go on Facebook or anything. He doesn't promote himself online. So how much promotion you do is up to you. We simply don't have the resources or the manpower to do the amount of promotion we'd like to do for every single broadcast. And we can't treat broadcasters differently. We're going to be all the same. 
So we rely on you guys to make sure that you promote your material. It's not up to us to promote it. Um, it's up to us to give you a good service in terms of broadcasting. Yes. Um, that is what we do. We provide a service of broadcasting, we process your archives, we get them posted out there, etc. Um, you know, I have never managed his online social media stuff, so he never grew what he's saying. His fan base didn't grow. But he's been doing this for years. He's been there for at least 20 years doing this stuff. This fan base is pretty limited because it's largely the Dutch market. It's got a very limited international fan base. Most of his markets is Dutch, which is, of course, a different language altogether. So it's, it's, um, it's pretty standard in terms of where he can go to next. You know, I said he, he needs to publish his next book in English and maybe even have a better market reach. So that was his reason for stopping, was because he felt that he wasn't there having enough growth in the styles of his work for the amount of work he had to put in constructing his shows. And he's the kind of guy, he doesn't do things really, really. He puts together a well-researched show, okay? Or he works for that sort of thing. He's not just going to stand there and, and, and look for an hour. He doesn't do small talk. <laughs> he just doesn't have it in him. So he has to have something to present. So he has to put a lot of work in. So I get where he's coming from. I have no issue with that. I love his honesty, the fact that he was direct with me, that he worshiped me about why he's here. And as a result, he's remained on good terms with us. And he can pass it to you. are welcome back anytime you want. And as a result, that's what we do. We give him a space. We're very accommodating. People, and now he said, Danny, when Darius was trolling my youngest broadcaster, being Nancy Marie, when he was harassing Nancy Marie hard, Darius being Lisa Harrison's boyfriend, who was 20 years younger than Lisa Harrison, I was, I was like, you know what, Darius saying, you know, you just pissed off because Lisa and Danny dare to leave an effort. I'm like, I don't get pissed off when people leave. What I get pissed off is when people treat me dishonorably and they're not, they're not, they're not straight with me about things. You know, they're not honest with me about what's going on. And Lisa and Danny were very manipulative about the way they did things, okay? Because they didn't want to own up to the truth. They didn't want to have a conversation with us and admit the fact the reason they were leaving is because they did not want to help us raise the money to um, get the board cost license be sorted for the following year, okay? Instead, they wanted to go off on their own and use the clout and the celebrity we had created for them, okay, to raise their own funding. Because when they first came to Conscious Consumer Network, remember, Nobody, nobody wanted to, to, anything to do with it because of the OPPT fuck up. In fact, Danny's first show, they only got something like 82 views. Okay? The first show on Conscious Consumer Network. We built those two up. Okay? We gave them a platform yes. to build themselves up. Yes. And they basically turned on and was like, now thank you for the gift, go fuck yourself. Basically. Oh. And we had a lot of that. We've actually had more broadcasters than I would say is necessary who have left on bad terms, uh, who just treated us so poorly. And it's actually quite disgusting because, well, like Zane said, he's been so disappointed. It's what it's been as a real eye open to him as to just how unevolved treatment really is. And it's, for me, in a different context, I've been able to observe that too, just to see how utterly uninvolved people are. But they're missing the very basics of human um, interactions, which is manners, right? Manners. Uh -huh. And this is just like the basics, you know? Please, thank you, you know, um, respecting people's time, no one's time's more important than anybody else, um, being, being uh, upfront with them, being direct about what's going on, and we can handle everything. We can, I can handle anything you can throw at us, so long as it's the truth. You know, it's the lies that freak me the fuck out. That's what makes me go nuclear. Yeah. So, um, that's, um, that's, that's the whole, yeah, I must just say, I'm feeling so much better this week. After all the shit kicked down last week, we had, I um, remember I was so depressed when I spoke to guys last week. Oh, yeah. I was so worried about everything. Um, well, one of Hope's um, sponsors sent us a nice chunk of funding so that we're sustained until um, the middle of September, which is when the next big thing kicks in, which is... Wow, yeah. good. That's so the first time. guys. There's a huge expansion going on. Um, I haven't told anybody about this. So I'm not going to until we until it's uh, on on the way. Let me just say that putting out plans beforehand only jinxes it because you find that if I start bragging about all other shows, people contacting the people we, we're working with and saying, "Don't do it! Don't do it!" Yeah, yeah. You're on mute, by the way. Let's just say that. Um. 
yeah, we are expanding into Europe. That we don't we just needed that we're expanding into Europe, we're expanding the foreign language section, and we've already got our first nice bit of security to keep CCA CRA for the next year set uh, coming towards us mid September. So yes. it's a uh, let me, let, me, let me come back to this one, okay, and I'll talk more about it when it's a done deal. Because you know the people involved. You do know the people involved. I just don't want anybody to talk about it until it's properly done. Because there's a sense of situation where there's so many people around, you know, on the scene. Um, and it's got to be done delicately because there's a lot of egos at play. Yeah. So, is it time? Guys, the panel, you guys will be the first to know. But it's exciting. What it does mean is we're not going anywhere. They're trying so desperately to tear us apart online, okay, to destroy CC. And I've seen things from Jeff Gates here, yeah, I'm watching the death spiral of CC. It's so painful to watch. Oh. Fuck you, dude. Where are you just getting started? You know? Yeah. Not sure. You guys aren't strong enough to destroy us. Not Randy, not Lisa, not Jeff Gates, not Daniel, not McKinney, no one. They're not strong enough. All they do is show how weak they are in trying to destroy us. Because I'm not trying to destroy them. Okay, I believe this is space for everyone in this world. Okay, we don't need to take somebody else just so that our space is more important. This is it? the whole premise upon which we fuck the world up in the first place. And if they're still working from that space, they ain't making a difference, are they? So I'm not going to create a better world by being like that. So I have no issue. What I have an issue with is when people engage in online hate mob campaigns to destroy the network, because if they have an issue with me, they must come to me, not go after my broadcasters, okay? Because you're my family, and I love you all very much, and I protect you all as much as I can. Um, but they have. I mean, every one of my broadcasters was labeled a pedo, because that's what I stood up and said, we let, let Zen tell his story. Zen's not even a pedo, okay? He's claimed he's never abused a child, he's never hurt a child. So he's not even a pedo, and yet everyone in the network's been labelled like that. I know you had a few chats with people, Ailish, because, you know, obviously they were saying these kind of things about us. And, you know, it's very necessary to have the entire network. You know, this is tar brushing one fast with pedo. You're all pedos. <laughs> That's the worst thing you can call someone. I can't hear you. You're on mute. Can I hear you? Okay, can you hear me now? Still? Hey, yeah. Hush. Hello. Hi. Hey, um, yeah. uh, it's like it's like everyone of the children of God who's had Hello? I can't hear you, Ish. Can you hear I can't. Oh. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, um, start up again. Just start up starting up again. Uh Alicia's starting up again, she says. I can't hear still, it's either. Oh. Hang on, let's let's end meeting and come back in.